Holly, hello, I'm Refashionista Sherry, and if you love thrifted fashion, vintage fashion, swapped fashion, secondhand, reused everything, then you've come to the right place because I put out a brand new rockin' Refashionista DIY tutorial every single week. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button, throw a like, leave me a comment down below letting me know some of the things that you actually have in your wardrobe, in your house, that you would love to figure out how to refashion. I'll see if I have something similar and then we will refashion and upcycle it together. Now, I was looking around my house the other day for something to refashion for this video and I found this adorable crochet thrifted blanket. Now you may remember this because I already refashioned it as part of my epic 30 days of refashions that I put out last year for the entirety of my birthday month. And this was a no so refashion and I created an adorable poncho out of it. But you know, I didn't really wear it that much except when I was like binging a series in front of the TV. So I thought today, let's refashion it into something that I will actually wear for the coming fall and winter weather. So you know what we're gonna make out of this? An adorable cardigan. Well, we're gonna try anyway, and fingers crossed, it's going to be super duper simple. So let's get making. <laughs> For this quirky cardigan project, all you need is your knit blanket, a pair of scissors, and your hand sewing gear. If you are unsure about hand sewing, go ahead and download my Sewing Basics ebook, or better yet, take my epically awesome Refashioning 101 e-course, every single thing you could ever wanna know about refashioning, upcycling, thrifting, and then reselling is in that, and you get a 50% off with the code REFASHION50. So go enroll and take that course today. Now let's get making. So because I already made this granny square blanket into a no-sew poncho, my general neckline area here is already done. So all I have to do is remove these squares here to open up the front to create my cardigan. If you're unsure how to go about finding the center of your blanket to create your little head hole neckline area here, I shall insert the steps I use to do that right now. If you have pretty much a great idea how to do that and you don't need those steps, then simply click on the timestamps below and you will be taken directly to the next step. To find the middle-ish square, all I'm gonna do is fold it in half again like so, so now it is double folded. And you know what's great about granny squares? You could actually not even fold this at all and just kind of count the squares <laughs> to find the middle square. But I folded it already, so let's just do it this way. Okay, so you see where my finger is right here? Oh, this square right here is going to be the middle square. So I'm just going to pinch it with my finger till I get back over to my table. <laughs> Okay, so here is my center square, and you can see here very easily, because it's different colors, that here is the yarn from the center square that is attaching it to the square on this side, and here on this side, and here, and here. So you just want to chop that connecting yarn of the center square. You do not want to chop any of the other squares. So now I have to remove all of these granny squares that are in this line on the front to open it up to be the cardigan, right? So all I'm gonna do is the exact same thing I did with this one, and I'm just gonna chop the gray yarn and gently pull it out of the green yarn here. So then that way I will still have this nice finished edge all the way down the front of my cardigan and I won't have to try to faff about trying to crochet it closed, which I really am terrible at doing. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna continue doing this. It does take a while because, you know, you gotta be careful. You're not cutting things that shouldn't be cut. And uh, once this is all removed, we will come back and do the next step. 
Okay, now that the front bit has been removed here, you can definitely see how this could pretty easily be turned into a cardigan. Or I can see it. I mean, it's in my head. It's already done in my head. So fingers crossed that what's in my head is actually going to work when we try to do it on the actual blanket here. So let's pop back over to the table and see what's next. So my table definitely wasn't big enough to lay it flat, so I have put it on the floor. And you can see here, I have these two front flaps folded over at the top. There is the open center part there. And now I need to go grab a loose fitting jacket to use to create my side seams and sleeves. So I decided to use my super fluffy faux fur cookie monster jacket because it is so loose and wide and perfect, I think, for a cardigan template. So all I did here was line up the collar with the collar area of my soon-to-be cardigan. And then I simply came over here and I popped a pin at the edge point, the side seam area here of my jacket, and then another pin right there at around the underarm seam area. And you can see here now, I'm pretty much going to be chopping out these two rows of three. And I'm going to do that on both sides of my soon-to-be cardigan. <laughs> How perfect does that look? That's definitely looking like a cardigan now. And all I have to do is go stitch this seam together here and that seam, and that will create my side seam and my sleeves. And I'll do that on both sides. And I'm going to use a blanket stitch because, well, this is a blanket. And again, if you don't know how to do any sort of cool hand stitches, grab my Sewing Basics ebook or take my Refashioning 101 e-course. How absolutely adorable is this? The, it j Come on, this came out so perfect. The only thing that I'm not happy about are the sleeves because of course they are just a little bit longer than my elbow, but you know what? I still have those side pieces that I chopped, so let's go figure out how we can use them to extend my sleeves. And maybe I can make some funky bell looking sleeves, so let's get to it. <laughs> So I have four of the chopped out side pieces here. One, two, three, four. And what I did was I grabbed two, popped them together with the right sides facing, and then using my funky little blanket stitch, I stitched the open sides together and I created these little sleeve cuff tubes. And I think these are actually wide enough that I can make them bell out a little bit, which is so super cool. So I now have two fabulous sleeve cuff tubes, and now it's time to stitch them onto the sweater sleeves. So I have my sweater laying right side out, and I have my sleeve cuff inside out. And now I'm just going to pop the sleeve cuff over the end of my sweater sleeve and I'm going to match up the chopped edge here with the hem of my sleeve and you can see I'm going to have to gather it just just a little bit here as I'm stitching or maybe I can just even stretch that to match but it's going to have a slight bell which I love so much and you know I have an entire playlist full of fabulous free DIY sleeve tutorials, so that shall be linked for you guys, so you can go make all the different kinds of sleeves that you could possibly want, and upstyle and refashion your wardrobe. And um, yeah, now I'm just going to go stitch this on, repeat on the other side, and then we're going to try it on and style it up. And another triumph! But I do have to admit, this was definitely one where I had my doubts part way through. And I'm sure you did too when, <laughs> when you saw some of the things that I was attempting. And again, totally, totally hand sewn. And look at those beautiful bell sleeves. The whole thing is just 
absolutely stunning. And was it hard to do? No, not at all. And uh, hand sewing, you guys, not a machine in sight. So if you can do a tiny little stitch, you can easily make this from just about any blanket that you have lying around your house that you can wrap around your body, right? It's super duper easy. If you are not comfortable with your hand stitching or you don't know where to start, as I mentioned earlier, download my Sewing Basics ebook. Everything is in there. Grab my awesome Refashioning 101 ebook that has even more in it, or you get my Refashioning 101 ebook free with my epic Refashioning 101 e course, which right now you get for 50% off using the code RE. Fashion 50, but I mean, I'm actually sweating. This is very, very cozy warm, but it is a hot day again today, so I'm gonna have to take it off. And that means it's time, once again, for troll time. So let's go see what I'm doing wrong this time. <laughs> Uh, yo, it's me, Guy, again, and uh, as you know, I handle logisticals and security for Refashionista Sherry, and uh, yeah, I'm doing a troll time today, so let's just uh, jump right into it, and today's troll, her name is Shannon, and uh, Shannon uh, says, do you really think this is helping anyone? Get some new ideas. I was doing this when I was a teenager in the 1960s. Okay, Shannon, thank you for that lovely comment. And uh, by the way, this comment was under, uh, you know, Sherry's Menden videos, how to patch things, how to mend things. And uh, Shannon, um, I'm pretty sure that uh, even before your time, say in the 1940s, the 1920s, the 1800s, the 1700s, hell, even back in caveman times, I'm pretty sure they were uh, mending things, mending their clothes, patching their clothes, you know, upcycling and refashioning has been around since, uh, since as long as the clothes have been around, I'm pretty sure. So nothing is new. Nothing is new. No one has new ideas. It's all recycled. Uh-huh. Recycled. Upcycled. The ideas, of course, get improved upon with each passing decade, each passing year, and people can bring their own unique thoughts and ideas and style to everything, but nothing's really new. That's why they have something called the 20-year trend cycle, and that's why uh, all these fancy runway shows and stuff, you sit there as you get a bit older and you go, wait a minute, I was wearing this stuff. Like right now in the stores, you can walk around and you can see stuff that you were wearing in the early 2000s, the late 1990s even. It's crazy. And uh, it's just natural. It's just a part of life. And that's really terrible. To, or you think it's helping people? You know, it is helping people. You know why? Because uh, a lot of your generation, Shannon, didn't actually teach their kids mending skills. Yeah, so it is 100% helping these people who don't know how to sew or mend or fix a button or patch a hole. Yeah, I actually do think it really is helping people. That's why Sherry did her uh, e-course, the Refashioning 101 e-course, to help people so they can, uh, you know, start doing all this kind of stuff and uh, creating their own clothes and fixing their clothes and, and learning how to reuse and upcycle from scratch because your generation dropped the friggin' ball, Shannon. So what do you think of them apples? Huh? There's an old saying for ya. I bet you that's familiar to ya. So, uh, yeah. Instead of going and criticizing like this, cause this is so stupid. I wish there was uh, some kind of Neanderthal caveman whatever who would be unfrozen and could write to you and go ooga ooga ooga, you know, which means I was doing this in the Ice Age time, right? But uh, there's not. So uh, you just got to, you got to get it from me, Shannon, that uh, nothing is new. Sherry even actually uh, did an article about this uh, a few years ago over on her blog. So we'll link that down below for you, all about the 20-year trend cycle and how it's been going on since the beginning of fashion. So uh, if you want to learn more, I suggest reading that article or you can, uh, you know, Google exists 
or you probably have some encyclopedias lying around somewhere and it's probably in there too because this is nothing new nothing new and again instead of criticizing someone who's trying to help people and teach people uh maybe uh say thank you and uh try to teach people yourself something if you know how to do this you make videos and you teach the younger generation how to do it because again your generation dropped the friggin ball shannon so uh yeah by the way here's a fun fact sherry was almost named shannon isn't that interesting i wonder if it would be refashionista shannon would this shannon have been nicer to her because it's the same name i don't know something to think about but uh until next time stay safe stay well and uh refashionista sherry and i we will catch you on the zigzag all right then this is Confessions of a Refashionista.